John chapter 10, Jesus compares himself for he, he tells us that he is the good shepherd and he also uh, says that he is the gate for the sheep. In the next study, we're going to be looking at Jesus the good shepherd. But in this study, we're going to look at what Jesus means when he says, I am the gate for the sheep. In verses 9 and verses 10 of John chapter 10, Jesus says this. He says, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters in through me will be saved. They will come in and out and find pastures. I have come that they might have life and might, that they might have it to the full. This seems an unusual thing for Jesus to say that he is the gate for the sheep. What did he mean by that? Some scholars believe that um, in the east, shepherds often lay across the entrance to the sheepfold as the gate for the sheep. In other words, anyone that wanted to go in or out had to go past the shepherd. So when Jesus says that he is the gate for the sheep, he's, he's saying that he's a kind of a human gate if you want to put it that way. So that um, it, it means that anyone or anything that wanted to get into the sheepfold had to pass through him. Now, Jesus says that uh, he's the gate for the sheep and that whoever enters through him will be saved. He's making a, a statement that uh, is it's a very simple statement. He's saying that salvation comes through him alone. I guess most of us um, would be familiar with that and, and as we read the scripture, we would immediately recognize that, that it's through Jesus that we, we are saved. And Jesus is restating something that's stated over and over again, not only in John's gospel, but throughout the New Testament. However, when we enter through the gate and we're saved, um, this picture of Jesus being the gate draws something else out. It also suggests, or teaches, <laughs> that we become part of God's flock. That our salvation isn't just an individual salvation. That by entering in through the, the gate, we enter into the, if you like, God's sheepfold, and we become one of God's sheep, we become part of his flock. So when Jesus led down his life for us uh, on the cross of Calvary, he became the gate for us and the gate through which we entered into God's sheepfold, God's church if you like, God's flock. We became part of God's people. So that's a, a, an important thing for, for us to, to, to recognize. This image of Jesus being the gate for the sheep um, also suggests something else. Jesus says that um, through him, the sheep will go in and out and find pasture. I think what's on Jesus' heart here is, is that he wants his flock to be healthy. He wants the sheep that make up his, his flock to be healthy sheep. Um, in Psalm 23, probably the uh, most famous passage of scripture that talks about uh, uh, God as being our shepherd, um, we're told that because the Lord's our shepherd, we'll not want. He makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside quiet waters and he, and he restores our soul. And of course, I think Jesus is referring uh, to something similar here. He's talking about his sheep coming and going and, and coming in and going out and finding pasture. In other words, they're able to, to go out and to graze and to drink and to to do the things that sheep do to stay healthy, and then they're able to come back into the security of the sheepfold again, all under the watchful eye of, of the shepherd. Uh, so it's on Jesus' heart that, that his flock, his people, us as, as Christians, as believers, uh, are healthy, that we're able to come in and out, if you like, to, to use this image of the, the, the sheepfold and the, and the flock. We're able to come in and to go out and to find pasture. Paul picks up a similar idea in his letter to the Colossians. He, he says in, in Colossians chapter 1, he says that he has not stopped giving thanks for the people of Colossae, Colossae and he is, is praying for them that they might walk worthy of the Lord um, unto all pleasing and that they are fruitful in every good work. In other words, what he's praying for is he's praying and that these believers in, in Colossae 
will be healthy and that they'll be fruitful and, and that, that they'll flourish. And it's exactly the same thing that's on Jesus' heart here in John chapter 10, that we as his flock, as his people, as his church, uh, that, that we flourish. And I guess we could apply this to your group as well, that God wants your group to flourish. Um, he wants it to be a healthy group. So this is what's on God's heart. It's not just that he has, uh, has got his own flock, that he gathers them together, but he wants that flock to be a healthy, flourishing flock. And he wants us all to be a part of something bigger than just ourselves. He doesn't come simply to give us individual salvation. No, it is an individual salvation, but he wants us to be connected to his flock, to his church, to his people. A third thing that we find here is that Jesus protects his flock. He is the gate for the sheep. He says the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but he has come that we might have life and have it to the full. You know, the truth is that God's flock, just like any flock of sheep, has its enemies. Um, there are thieves that will come and try and steal the sheep. Um, there are wolves, there are wild animals that will attack the sheep. And, and just as a, a shepherd, uh, not just in, in Jesus' day, but in our own day, will seek to protect his flock. So Jesus uh, protects us from the enemy. The Bible says that Satan, um, 1 Peter chapter 5 says Satan is like a roaring lion and he's, he's going around looking for someone to devour. And whether we like it or not, Satan is after God's flock. Um, he wants to, to take individual sheep out. And actually, one of the ways that he does that is by isolating us. If he can get us isolated from the rest of the flock, then we're easy prey for him. But Jesus says that he has come that we might have life and have it to the full. So here we have a picture of, of Jesus protecting his flock uh, from the assaults of the enemy, from the thief who comes to steal, kill and destroy. This is just an incredibly encouraging picture for us to know that it's through Jesus that we're saved, that we're not saved simply because of our own works or what we can do. It's so encouraging to know that we're made a part of of God's bigger picture, of his bigger purposes. We're part of his church, of his flock. Uh, I think it's, it's so encouraging that uh, not only do we want to flourish as Christians, not only do we want to bear fruit and to, to be faithful witnesses and to, to have, if you like, an influence or an impact for Christ, but that's what's in God's heart as well. He wants us to flourish. He wants us to grow. Uh, he, he, he wants us to have that life that Jesus came to bring us. And how reassuring it is to know as well that he protects us, that he's our ultimate protector from the one who comes to kill, steal and destroy. So I hope that uh, you're encouraged as you dig into the scriptures and that are connected to this uh, image that Jesus gives us, this picture that he paints of himself as the gate for the sheep.